The time bomb is ticking. Another bushfire season is almost upon us, and yet again, our forests are tinder boxes full of fuel just waiting for a spark. You'd think we'd learn. Black Friday, Ash Wednesday, and then last February, the firestorm of Black Saturday in Victoria. It's a roll call of devastation stretching back decades. But despite umpteen inquiries and recommendations, governments have ignored the compelling evidence that winter burn-offs will prevent these catastrophes. Only Western Australia has heeded the warning, and they reckon they can teach the rest of us how to tackle Australia's oldest enemy by fighting fire with fire. It looks like arson, but this is protection. Commence, 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 commence. On the ground and from the air. In Western Australia, they're starting fires now, so they don't have to fight them later. Here, they've learnt a valuable lesson, long forgotten in the eastern states. Fire can either be a helpful servant or terrifying master. My attitude is fire is part of our environment and we can actually learn to use it in a way that not only provides a high level of protection, but allows our environment to thrive. Use fire to fight fire. Use fire to fight fire. Absolutely. Rick Sneejack runs WA's hazard reduction program. Since 1961, when wildfires devastated the town of Dwellingup, the state government has embraced a policy of preemptive burn-off. Today, they burn about 8% of their bush every year. That's more than four times as much as any other state. I can't see us ever wanting to go back to a, an era where we uh, allow the, the fuel to dictate the, the lives of our people. Mm. We must keep on top of the fuel, and prescribed burning is the best way to do that. A bushfire needs three things, heat, oxygen and fuel. Now the one ingredient we can control is fuel and that's exactly what they do here in Western Australia. Each year they burn about 200,000 hectares of their bushland. They don't wipe it out, but what they do is get rid of all the rubbish on the ground. The leaves, the sticks, the bark, the very stuff this bushfire feeds off. And that's what you're watching them do right now. And they're convinced here in WA that because they do this, they avoid the big fire tragedies experienced in the eastern states. For 60 years, the debate over hazard reduction has raged as hotly as the fires themselves. David, walking through here, what do you think now? Well, this fire that was here was nothing like a prescribed burn. It was a holocaust. And a holocaust results when you have huge fuels on a very hot, windy, dry day. Scientists like David Packham watch in anger and frustration as time after time, Australia suffers massive devastation. We've been warning about this for decades, years and years, that this is what's going to happen. And it will happen again. In 1939, it was Black Friday. Ash Wednesday in 1983. Canberra in 2003. Behind us, son. Behind us. And the most recent, most deadly, Black Saturday in February this year. Extreme temperatures and enormous fuel loads resulted in the worst fires in Australia's history. Victoria lost over 2,000 houses and 173 lives. The intensity of uh, a very severe fire is being compared with atomic bombs burnt, let off every 10 minutes or so. It's, it's a massive amount of energy that gets uh, accumulated in our forests. And under the right conditions, that energy just explodes. Strathewen, an hour's drive from Melbourne, was hit by such an explosion. Dinny Shepherd's life was torn apart by the firestorm. 
to lose your husband, your son and your brother, it's, man, you just, if you think about it, then I will go to pieces. I, ha I have to cling to the, to the good memories that I've got of them. And I don't know, war survivors, they go through it, they come out of it, I've got to do it. I have to. Dinny, you're a bloody strong woman. <laughs> We have our moments, we have our moments when we're not. <laughs> 30 years ago, Dinny and her husband Joe came to Strathewan and built a mud brick home where they raised their sons, Danny and Luke. Like many families around here, it was their love of the bush that would place them at peril. We made that house, we built every brick. You know, as we excavated for the site, the mud that was excavated, we made the bricks with it. We came up here every weekend, made those bricks, built that house. Joe was a volunteer firefighter with the CFA. And on that black Saturday, Dinny's brother, Hank, called to ask for help with spot fires starting on his property. Joe didn't hesitate. His oldest son, Danny, went with him. That's what you do, you go and give them help. And we knew that with that sort of fire, every person manning a hose or a knapsack or whatever was going to be needed. You had no idea of the chaos that was going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely none, because it just hit Strathew in, in an absolute firestorm. Look, people are trying to evacuate. The shepherds got caught by a wind change. They were less than a kilometre from home when Joe's van was trapped by a fallen tree. I, I just know that he was trying desperately to get back to me though. I, I know that what, that's what my husband would have done. Yeah. And, and to have your son. Uh, yeah, 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 that was just, yeah. He'd only been married in November. Danny died in the back of the van. Joe survived for two weeks in hospital but never regained consciousness. The only Victorian firefighter to die in the Black Saturday fires. His great mate, Fire Chief David McGay, delivered the eulogy. Joe gave his life for his family, his friends and his community. It's probably as hard a thing that I, as I've had to do is to do part of the eulogy at his funeral. Mm. Men like David McGay and fellow fire chief Michael Chapman are the ones who face the consequences of fuel build-up in our bush. I first met them just days after Black Saturday. The people up here have suffered to such a degree and there's been such unbelievable acts of bravery and this fella here, he committed some of the most brave acts I've ever encountered. I um, don't think um, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm not asking your opinion. He did, OK, and, and people stayed on the lines when they didn't know their, uh, whether their family were alive or dead. And um, our houses burnt down. Nine months after the fires, Strathewan is still dead space a cleared valley full of harsh lessons. I mean, that night showed how ineffective the fire brigade is. We can't do anything about a fire like that. Absolutely nothing. How long had it been since the last hazard reduction burn around here? No, there hasn't been one. 39 it came through here, I believe. How hard was it to get hazard reduction burns before Black Saturday? No, impossible. You couldn't, you couldn't. Look, they, in, in fairness to the authorities, they tried, but it, it's very difficult to get the time frame to do them. And it, at that stage, it was a political hot potato, as I say, especially on this south side of the range where you impacted upon Melbourne. And they don't want the smoke in Melbourne. They don't want the smoke on their washing. Did this need to be as bad as it was? Oh, it would definitely not be as bad as it was. Now, when you reduce your fuel loads, you don't stop the fires. but. A fuel reduction program will reduce the intensity of the fires, 
probably a hundred times. Could there still be another Black Saturday, David? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And already, fuel loads have been blamed for the first major fire emergency of the season in Queensland a fortnight ago. And further south, Australia's biggest city, Sydney, doesn't have to look very far to find potential disaster on its doorstep in the famous Blue Mountains. What I see is an absolutely frightening, terrible sort of massive bushfire fuel and I'm I actually feel quite nervous and upset about it because it just looks so dangerous. You're all that worried about it? Oh yes, I think this is absolutely terrible. <laughs> I, I, I really haven't seen anything as bad as this anywhere else in the world. Well, you know, this is, this is explosive. This is, this is rocket fuel. This is just terrible stuff. But it's everywhere. There's been no hazard reduction burning in this area of the Blue Mountains for 50 years. And the conditions here, just a stone's throw from major towns, are almost identical to the fuel loads in Victoria prior to Black Saturday. Does this remind you of those areas of Victoria that burned on Black Saturday? Very similar to the areas in the round King Lake and the Shire of Nillenbeck, which uh, encompassed most of the deaths in Victoria. There are plenty, though, who say fuel reduction isn't the answer. I think it's a bit of a myth that hazard reduction burning will um, do anything on days like Black Saturday, where the weather conditions were just so, so extreme. Phil Ingemols, head of the Victorian National Parks Association, warns that a knee-jerk reaction ramping up fuel reduction programs could do more harm than good. Are you saying we could lose species because of this? I think if we, if we increase the frequency of burning in many areas, we will definitely lose species. But if you increase burning to levels being advocated, does it work? It will work in some cases, but it certainly won't stop a wildfire like we had on Black Saturday. And that's um, very clear, and I think it can give people a false sense of security in a sense. But reducing fuel obviously reduces a fire. I mean, if you concreted the bush, that would solve it too. But you wouldn't have the bush. And surprisingly, it's a sentiment shared by Dinny Shepherd, a woman who lost so much at the hands of nature. But all these, these logs, the timber, the leaves, the twigs, it's all fuel for those bushfires, isn't it? Yeah, it's also habitat. It's, it's habitat for little tiny skinks and habitat for spiders and the insects that the birds will eat. It's, it's, it's all a part of what the Australian bush is. Come on then. And that's where Dinny has taken her greatest comfort, in the bush. She's guardian angel to an orphaned wombat called Kim. She's been just the right thing for you, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you can help somebody or something else that's been bushfire affected is very special. Therapy in a wombat. Yes, yes. <laughs> Definitely there. Definitely therapy in a wombat. Yeah. As the victims of Black Saturday rebuild their lives, there's another fire season upon us. And with the fuel load situation unresolved, the predictions are for wildfires across southeastern Australia. This means volunteers like David McGay will once again confront an old enemy. We'll all have our moment of truth when we first get our first sniff of smoke. How do you think you'll be then? I'll find out then. I think I'll be all right, but, but I mean, uh, yeah, you don't know. This summer uh, and this bushfire season, men like Joe yeah. are going to put on the uniform again and race out the door. Yep. Yep. How will you be feeling at that time? Scared stiff. Scared stiff. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. 
And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.